In an increasingly globalized world, how does a country stand out? This is a country made of land and sea, a crossroad between the Mediterranean and the Atlantic, a link between cultures and continents. This is the homeland of talented people, a founding member of the Euro, a gateway to a market of 500 million people. This is the home of a world leader in fast and ultra-fast chargers for electric vehicles. A country that produces more than half of its energy out of renewable sources. A privileged partner for innovation. Every day, more and more companies come to work and think with us. We also produce cars. But above all, we think cars. Think the green road ahead of us and think the future. Innovation is taking the country to new frontiers. This is the world's biggest cork producer, transforming cork for the most traditional and revolutionary uses, from the top of the most precious wine bottles in the world to thermal shields, rockets and spaceships destined for space. This is a leading tourist destination in the world. A competitive and sustainable location. A top country in providing technological services. Host of great international events integrated in some of the most important value chains in the world that attracts and keeps some of the most talented people. So how does a country stand out in an increasingly globalized world? Well, I guess it's by welcoming the world and bridging cultures. <laughs> Portugal, talented and welcoming.
Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to our weekly international prop chat on every Wednesday, 3 p.m. GMT plus 8 at Facebook or YouTube Live. I'm Mandy Chen from IQI Global, your host of the day. On behalf of IQI Global, the Asia's biggest real estate and investment agency, also a member of GUI IQI, I would like to thank everyone for supporting our program. Our webinar usually features some of the best investments or projects in the various hotspots around the globe. If you like our program, which you think that is benefiting you, do invite and share it with your friends. Should you have any comments and questions, feel free to leave it at the comment box and we will revert to you shortly. Today, we shall continue to focus on one of the beautiful countries of Europe, which is Portugal. Well, we are very honored to invite a migration specialist who is the only migration advisor from Malaysia that was awarded with the top 25 global migration agency CEO from U Global Immigrations Magazine based in US. Let's put our hand together and welcome Mr. Desmond Ng, Managing Director of Global Migrations Solutions, to share with us the introductions of the Portugal investment landscape and golden visa. Hi, Desmond. How are you? Hi, Mandy. Good afternoon, everyone. And thank you for the introduction. Maybe I'm you want to... Yes. yes. Maybe you want to do a short introduction of yourself before mm -hmm. we kickstart the topics? Sure. So I'm Desmond Ang, the founder of Global Migration Solutions. Uh, we have an office based here in Malaysia, Singapore, uh, Australia, Vietnam, and Hong Kong. So we have been in this industry for the last 17 years. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Yeah, and thank you for having us today. Okay. The floor is on yours. You can actually start now. Sure. So I'm, very, I'm really, really excited to share about the programs with everyone out there today. And uh, yeah, and I hope that you enjoy what, you are, what, you are hear, what you'll be hearing today and find an interest and, and learn about these programs and the country well. So Mandy, I would like to get my slides up and yeah. Thank you. So just to kickstart uh, the presentation, just allow me to give a short introduction about Global Migration Solutions. So this is a company that has been around for the last 17 years, and we focus on the right migration practices, and we take very seriously with regards to the trust and the services and our commitment for our client, uh, likewise our business partner, as well as you know our brand over the years. Just a little bit of our uh, milestone, uh, over the last 17 years, we have helped more than 12,000 families uh, migrating successfully. And uh, we have been able to achieve an extremely high successful rate, which have landed us to be, to, to be the, you know, the, the only one uh, migration that is being awarded with you know, the, uh, the recognition over the years. Now, so this is the awards that we have more ourselves from being the, the, the top 100 globally to now top 25. So this is our, our presence. And either you are in from Hong Kong, you are from, uh, from Philippines, or you are from Indonesia, or you are from anywhere you know, in the world, we are here to help you up. Now, let's talk about okay. this Australian Portugal Golden Visa. Yeah, can you um, give us a brief introduction of Portugal for those that who might not be familiar with Portugal? And for those audience who join, join us, if you know Portugal and you love these countries, please press one so that we will know that you really like this country. Okay, Desmond? Sure. Well, I'm really, you know, I think you know how excited I am, you know, when it comes to the Portugal Golden Visa. And I think there are so much more to share about the country. And you have already seen what is in front of your screen. Uh, the country has scored many amazing index globally. And, but I think I wanted to share more than just what you have seen you know, on the screen. So for those who have not been to Portugal, the country has been a member of European Union for 36 years. And this is indeed a very authentic country 
it is modern, yet it is an European that is still comes with a lot of old charm about it. Yeah, it is historical as a foreign as a foreigner. Portugal has such a huge history behind, and it is for such a small country with 11 million in population size. Wow. Okay. So when it come to um Europe, right? Many people think that uh, about some other European countries. Uh, but where is it, and how is the infrastructure in terms of uh the connectivity as well? Yeah. So you're not talking about you know I would you know this is a very nice question because I think when people visiting Europe and they might not think about Portugal as the first choice, which includes mm -hmm. myself. But for many, for many years back, I had a chance to visit Portugal and that actually changed my whole perceptions after visiting the countries. And I, I, I didn't, you know, thought about even extending my, our services to cover Portugal Golden Visa, uh, like what we have been doing for, for the past few years. So I think this Portugal, the country is, is, I would say this is probably the most undiscovered country within the, the Western Europe. And the accounting firm Price Waterhouse has called this country as the Europe best kept secret. And I, I'm going to share, you know, the reason why. I think when we talk about the country, right, the, the infrastructure fund was pouring in being a member of European Union. The infrastructure fund was pouring in, you know, to connect the country from north to south, east to west, and high, highway were all being built. Airport were, you know, increasing the capacity. And the connecting the connectivity was improving within the country. Uh, so when we talk about the connectivity, it was increasing since many years back, and not only within the country but outside the country. So with the airport that increased the capacity, for example, the Lisbon Airport, yeah, it is just seven to nine hours away from America, yeah, and Middle East, and it is just one and a half hours away from UK. So that gives you an idea on how strategic the Portugal is. Yeah, Mandy. Yep. So therefore, it's like over the past 10 years, right, the country actually grew to become the most potential country for foreigner investment as well as for the tourism boom. So can you talk a little bit about it? Sure. Well, you know, I'm not sure how many people out there, you know, that you are listening now have been to Portugal but you know if you have not then my advice to you is your next thing about portugal as your next travel destination <laughs> and i'm yeah, sure this is open opening right now so yes yes and i know Mandy and you know portugal uh, uh iqi is arranging a trips and you are going to be visiting portugal very soon and you know uh i think from the statistic right every two out of the three people that has visited portugal choose to return back and in fact this is the top uh, top not only for migration purposes but the top country within europe that has you know been seen uh in terms of the tourism trending mm -hmm. so the portugal is a trend is trending as a tourism country today yeah and portugal is elected for the third time as the best tourist you know destination globally in the world can you believe that so it has amazing restaurant with really talented chef, cool boutique hotels around the country, lots of interesting products and brands emerging from every part of Portugal. So talking about brands and products, and Portugal is the leading arena of producing the sustainable energy productions. It produces about 30% of the gross final energy demand for example, in the year 2019, yeah, mainly from the hydropower and the, the wind generation. So for one month, Portugal has produced enough energy to sustain the whole country and with the remaining 11 months to supply, you know, across globally. So everyone know by now Portugal, how Portugal is beautiful country. So you have over 900 kilometers beautiful coastline. And you have amazing island like Madeira, which mm -hmm. came out as the number one island in the world. And you have olive oil plantation, scenic wine yard, protected by UNESCO as a world heritage, beautiful rivers and mountain. And that 
you know, is one of the reasons why Portugal came out as the num world number one travel destination. Wow, that's when you sounded so great that it's like, I can't wait to visit Portugal. So imagine how beautiful this country is and there's lots of uh, 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 tourist spots that you can actually visit. Okay, besides that, the country is also famous for the quality lifestyle and mm. as it is brand number one for expat, retiree and migrants in today's trend. Why? You probably want to share with us. Certainly. So, you know, Portugal is getting so well recognized for some other factors as well. But I think, you know, in terms of the lifestyle, it is one of the important ones when, when one's considering where to go to yeah, or where to move their, their family member to. So the quality of the lifestyle over the years, you know, the country has affected American, British, Brazilian, French, as well as Asian, who has made Portugal their second home. Yeah, and talking about the lifestyle, I think it is also about the convenience. So we have late night shopping, Sunday shopping. I guess this is one of the, you know, the question that always, you know, I heard over the times, you know, if I were to move to this European country or this Western country, you know, how late is the shopping mall going to be operating until? Yeah, because it is so, I think it is an Asian culture that, you know, we are still spending our times late night shopping. Yeah. Yep. And um, amazingly, you know, Portugal has everything that you need. So the ease of access to quality services is important, yeah? And to be valued, lifestyle is also about living in suitable weather, yeah? Not too hot, not too cold in Portugal, and a lot of sunshine, clean air, not to be underestimated. Lifestyle is about to access to the nature, quality food, living in a safe and secure environment, and the Portugal rank in all these points wow okay that sounds really great how about education uh, uh on the other hand is language going to be a problem i mean usually yes. people will say about this i mean and we'll ask this one of the common questions that they will ask yeah i think when when you're considering european countries you know as versus australia canada america you know and they are they are you know thinking how is the language is language is going to be a barrier? Now, from mm -hmm. another perspective, I think, you know, by giving your children an opportunity and environment to learn a second language is such an opportunity. Just for example, you know, for those who is learning English, for example, and without an environment uh, that speaks English, communicate in English, is going to be making, you know, the learning process much, much more difficult. Mm -hmm. But when it comes to Portugal, right, I would think that, you know, that environment do, you know, give your children an opportunity to learn Portuguese. But that language has now been a barrier and a problem in Portugal when it comes to communicating in English. It is such a great place. The country is such a great, great place for education. So Portugal University produce high number of engineers every year, IT graduates, architects scientists yeah and they are they are needed especially today in today's world by many international companies that are thinking to move to portugal now or those who has moved who has set up the, the companies in portugal yeah mm -hmm. foreign students who are uh coming to portugal for are thinking to not only the study but also attracted by the programs that taught in english by this top university, yeah. So the quality of education, you know, is a combination of quality of the education and the lifestyle that attracted all these students to go over to Portugal, yeah. If your child is at the primary and secondary school level, you could choose to send them to the international school, yeah, mm -hmm. which you're probably paying 8,000 8, 8, euro to 10,000 euro per year that mm -hmm. taught in English, or you do consider sending them to the local school that's free where they can pick up the portuguese and jump into the community easily so to live there it is one of the european countries where you can communicate easily without having to speak the portuguese as 90 percent of them speak english wow okay so in other words communication would not be an issue in portugal yes you know they I uh, come back, you know, and tell me after you have visited Portugal, and then you know, I am sure 
that you are going to every one of you are going to love it. The whole team is going to love it, Mindy. Yep. And I heard Portugal is called the Silicon Valley of Europe. Is it wonderful for the countries? And uh, maybe you want to elaborate a little bit on this? Sure. I think a lot of people are not aware about this, but I think it is a good question, Mandy. Uh, you know, ever since the world largest web summit announced Lisbon as the host city for in 2016 to host the web summit for the next 10 years. So this has helped Portugal to receive a lot of attention and recognition as the Silicon Valley of Europe. You can see companies like Google, companies like Huawei, and many other countries, uh, uh, sorry, other international uh, companies has chose to set up you know, their head, European headquarters in Portugal. And the growth is going to be continued. Yeah. Why is it so? Because the Portuguese government has introduced so many administrative to simplify the processes, the procedures to remove some of the red tape when it comes to venture capital, when it comes to private equity company, and one to you know one who is looking at setting up the business in Portugal. So the government has you know over the years has introduced a series of investment initiatives and incentives over the years. For example, the Portugal Golden Visa that we are talking today you know, is one of it. Yeah, the startup visa. The tax incentive we kept the, the tax rate flat at twenty percent if you are the, uh, the tax residents of Portugal, yeah. And when it comes to twenty percent of flat tax rate, this is so competitive. This is you know so much lower compared to many other re in the region, yeah. The government co investment scheme is one of the interesting thing you know for startup. The government participate in all these startup, and no doubts all this incentive has brought both financial and human capital over the years you know via foreign investor immigrants and billions of dollars has brought into the country <laughs> wow okay so before we kick uh we start the uh golden Port portugal golden visa uh in a little bit more detail what is the last things that would you like to share about portugal mm. Well, I think the human aspect, because I think this is one of the very uh, important questions that one would ask me, hi Desmond, you know, how welcome are these people, you know, when I move over uh, the local people towards the migrants? And I must say that, you know, I like to touch upon an emotional aspect and a reason, yeah, mm -hmm. to address your last question. And I think that I have observed and gathered from the clients who has moved over, Portugal ranked third on the Global Peace Index. And guess what? Number one is from Iceland. Number two is from New Zealand. One is, you know, full of ice, too cold. One is, you know, a country that's full of sheep. And Portugal is where, you know, it's strategically located. And yet, you know, it ranked number, it ranked number you know, the top three globally uh, in terms of the Global Peace Index. Mm -hmm. And I think generally Portuguese people are very welcoming. They show foreigner warmth and hospitality, and which why the hospitality industry is doing so well in Portugal. Yeah. And you know, the, they are family-centric people, yeah, in the sense that they love and care and support their children. That sounded so much like our Asian culture, right? So which yeah. reflects in the society. You know, people are respectful in Portugal in terms of the elderly. So the people look after their parents and their grandparents and they value their advice, you know, and they spend time with, 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 the, with the elderly. So Portugal is really a, you know, a very open and tolerant and liberal society. So people welcome, you know, people from different countries, different religion, different belief and different colors. And I think this is worth a lot in today's generation. Yeah. Yep, exactly. So I hope that you know this 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 introduction gives everyone you know a uh, a bit of uh overview about the country, about the people, about the opportunity. And we have spoke about investment, mm -hmm. we have spoke about how the country grows, we spoke about the language, we spoke about you know the uh, the 
the the the suitability in terms of the lifestyle and look at you know how many country how many company all these international companies that has now set up their their office in in portugal yeah and yeah you know and this is i hope that this is a good introduction about the countries okay so i think right now we come to the, the main uh, content of this webinar so would you want to introduce the popular uh portugal golden visa to us yes thanks wendy yeah well let me give everyone out there you know a directions you know when you learn about this portugal golden visa and this is to help you to uh to remember how powerful and how how popular is this visa today this visa was introduced back in 2012 by portuguese golden uh, by portuguese government it is such a reliable and highly regulated programs so whatever that is being requested for the visa application is all backed and supported with the full sets of law and regulation yeah and what is important about these programs and we talk about the initiative from the portuguese government earlier yeah and one of it is this golden visa so the intent and the objective of these programs is to make the entry requirements achievable and 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 acceptable by all the investors and migrants and importantly and what what do i mean by here is you know that investment amount is just starting from as low as 280 000 euro yeah and there are so many types of investment a few a few category of investment that suits you for you to choose from and it is importantly this is the program that's easy to maintain so we're going to talk about that what does it mean by easy to maintain is just to think about it if you're not ready to move over yet and these programs after the approval require you to spend just as little as 14 days every two years so it is easy doesn't cause a problems or headache for you to maintain as compared to many other countries elsewhere you know having to spend times uh in 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 the country uh is always a challenge so in hong kong they call yiman kam you know and here in malaysia or singapore they say they're going to be prisons for some times whereas for when we talk about this golden visa and uh, this require you to relatively spend only 14 days in every two two years right so this is also a very family friendly programs because it does allow you to include your spouse then your children now when we talk about children there's no age limit so long your children is single studying financially depending upon you and they are allowed to be included then you can also include your parents and your parents in law so it is going to be a big family member if you wish to get everybody a portugal golden visa yeah this is the program for you to consider and this program comes immediately with the healthcare and education benefits. Importantly, this program is one of the easiest programs for you to assess and gain the EU citizenship. Yeah. Five years, we are going to talk about that. Five years later, you have the EU passport. That is the end game, Mandy. So that is the end game. Most of our clients are using Portugal as the entry point to gain the access to the eu passport because with the eu passport it is not just the portugal but the rest of the 26 country within the second area just to think about it your children do have a choice to study at any of the university in this 26 country with the subsidized education upon the completion of their study they have rights to live and work at any of these 27 countries in the second area so that is the directions you know that i would like to give everyone out there wow since you say that uh there are many options available for this uh investment so perhaps and one of it is is actually on the residency visa so uh maybe you can just tell us what we can invest i mean i'm very excited after hearing uh, all the uh, freedoms and, and the beauty of the country so let's let's talk about the main point then sure well as you can see this is an investment for residency visa so certainly there's some sort of investment required and we spoke about that you know that's that investment starts from two hundred eighty thousand euro 
So relatively, this is a very attractive uh, amount. While there are various options, what I like to hear to see right in front of me here, I'm sure every one of you would agree with me, is real estate. I think some people are looking from the investment perspective, but some of the people are looking from investment plus residency perspective. Even though if you were to buy the property, you know, with the from the IQI, but you know, you decided to apply for the golden visa a year or two later, you still can do so provided the law doesn't change. Yeah. So what you could do. First of all, is to invest into the residential real estates, and this is this is anywhere you know that you like, but it has to be in the interior area. Where it is a completed unit, then it is five hundred thousand, and if it is in the interior area and in the area that is located in the low density area, there's a twenty percent discount, and it becomes four hundred thousand. On the other hand, you also you also have an options of rehabilitation uh, investment. So just to give all of you an idea, when we talk about this rehabilitation, basically it is a project that has not been renovated, for example, for 30 years, and the developer acquired that building, is going to reconstruct internally, you know, tear down everything, rebuild, but to maintain the facades, yeah. So under this type of investment, it starts from 350,000, and if it is located in low-density area, then it becomes 280,000. Yeah, so this is really, really att attractive. Among all the investment that I'm going, I'm going to be sharing later, 93% of the people were to choose the real estate. Okay. There's also the commercial real estate that you can choose to if you like to invest into the shop lots, grocery store, yeah, for example, you know, and some of the some of the uh, uh some sort of property that's running it for the commercial purposes then you could choose to invest anywhere in uh in the country yeah and it is not restricted to be in the in the interior area yeah so it is also 500,000 and 400,000 if that property that commercial property is the low density area the likewise rehabilitation project for commercial that we spoke about yeah and it is also reduced to become 350 and 280 right other than the real oh, this is just to give you an idea the map of Portugal, those that you you that that you see, that's those area that you see in red. Basically, it is for only uh, residential, right? And then those in in uh, blue color, it is for commercial, right? So in other words, in blue color, you can't invest in residential. Okay, so you can basically invest anywhere you know in the in 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 Portugal. So long if you go for the commercial uh, investment. Okay. Other than property, also you have the capital transfer. And here it covers two, uh, two options. One is to leave your money in the fixed deposit for one, one and a half million for five years. Another option is to, uh, it, to participate in the private managed fund yeah, of 500,000. Yeah. Uh, another option is for you to consider if you intend to run a business in Portugal, then your business will need to create 10 full-time employment. Yeah. So this is also one of the options available. All right. Can you briefly explain about the process of the Golden Visa application? I mean, in the events that right now, um, any one of us are interested to, to, to go into it, and how fast is the processing time? Sure, sure. Well, the process doesn't take too long. As the, there are two parts in this whole entire process. One is to invoke, you know, to make investment decision. Another part of it is the visa application, you know, and get your golden visa through. I would say the whole entire process probably range from about ten months to a year, depending on how fast you know when you are able to make the investment decision. Now, we take the process very seriously. Where has a proper consultation with the client, check on their sources of fund, make sure that the eligibility is all checked, okay? And we conduct a, a background checks on clients before, you know, we carry them through the whole process. And the tax file opening and the bank account opening is really the first steps of the, of the application. As I mentioned, the program is highly regulated. Your fund is going to be transferred from your accounts to your personal accounts in Portugal once, it is, once your bank's account is being opened. You're not required, or we do help our clients 
to get the bank accounts open up without you traveling to Portugal. So this can be done you know, at your convenience. So once the bank accounts is open, you move, you transfer your money across from your banks here to the Portuguese bank accounts of yours. So as I mentioned, this is such a highly regulated programs that the money doesn't you know, go through any third party, so you have the full control of your funds. Then, when the funds is all moved into the Portugal, say you take, you are going to participate in a 280,000 project, then you need to move at least 280,000 into the bank's accounts, yeah, as this is needed for the submission of the visa application. So we also carry your hand through, you know, to get to identify and to get the property or the investment that you wish to invest into, right? And we will also work to support your all your conveyancing work, right? Then once the investment is determined, then we carry up your hand through and we file the visa, golden visa application. Approximately in three months time, you will get a pre-approval that at the step seven, that's when you need to make a trips to Portugal to complete the biometrics. After the biometrics, then your Portugal Golden Visa cards will be issued to you in approximately one month time. From there, your five years of the Golden Visa status starts. Yeah, so that's kind of summarized that process, Mandy. Wow, thank you very much, Desmond. So once you get the approval of the visa, what is the next step? Okay, well, I mentioned about the EU citizenship earlier. Yeah, that is the end game. And I just wanted to share with all of you, you know, I talk about EU citizenship and also talk about the ease of maintaining these programs. I want to share with every one of you here, you know, on how, you know, on, on what is the requirements after the approval of the Portugal Golden Visa. And talking about that, you know, these programs would require you to maintain the status, the Golden Visa status for a minimum of five years. During the first two years, you are required to spend at least 14 days maintain the investment and free from the criminal or the current certificates yeah police current certificates when you fulfill this condition then you will be you are entitled to obtain the golden visa for the next for the third and the fourth year and the same condition apply then you are entitled to obtain the golden visa for the fifth and the sixth years so basically the golden visa is issued to you in three rounds with two years, two years, and two years, you know, in 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 a row, yeah, each times. So on the fifth year, you must spend seven days maintain the investment and free from criminal. On your six years, that's where you are going to decide to become a permanent resident or a citizen of Portuguese yeah, and holding the Portugal Portuguese passport. Okay, if we are looking at the requirements. That 14 days of residency requirement is easy to be maintained. Maintaining investment, when we talk about the property, it is only for five years after you have taken up the citizenship. There isn't a requirement for you to maintain the investment anymore. You can keep your property, for example, for those who choose the property, as it is really representing 93% of the total application. I would guess that most of you out there probably choose the property. So your property can be kept for rental, short term or long term your property can also be kept for the own use depending on your needs for example and then after five years you know it's at your own discretion yeah and then so long you don't get yourself you know a jail term you're or being sentenced yeah as a criminal you know offense then you get your pr or citizenship after the five years so that is the end game yeah to most of the people why is it so? Because when you are a Portuguese uh, passport holder, you, are, you have the full rights to live in 27 countries, including Portugal. Yeah. So these are the 26 countries that is listed here, you know, for you to have the opportunity. And not only that, your children to have the opportunity to study and work yeah, without having to consider any other visa, you know, in the future. Yeah. Talking about that, you know, if your children were to choose to study in Ireland for the most, probably the most expensive uh, education, you know, in Medicare, uh, in medicines. So 
as a as an international student that will cost your your you probably uh, 55,000 euro per year and being an eu student just look at how you know how how much savings you are going to you are going to save from being a you know a eu students by holding the portugal passport yeah oh, almost 70 percent yes it is 70 percent it's 70 percent of six years and and i think that's going to be big and big amount and in fact you know the saving is greater than the investment yeah. yeah it's indeed i mean for those uh, parents who have kids that would, would like to pursue medical or medicines yes. uh, perhaps you should consider getting this uh portugal golden visa to save uh all this uh easily like i would say forty thousand a year minimum yes and i think that the 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 it is is one of the strong push factor or motivation factors if your kids love it your kids your kids love you know engineering and portugal has so many top university germany is famous for the engineering if your kids your children are more artistic they like music and all well europe is probably the best countries you know there are so many countries available for the children to embark on that you know that developments all right Wow, I think this is also very interesting to share about these Erasmus programs in Europe. If your kids were to decide, hey, you know what, other than Europe, but I also want to be back to Asia, or I want to be in Australia, New Zealand, yeah, or they will choose to be in United States or Canada, right? Guess what? You are basically having to pay only a local fee Without being, for example, if they were to go to Australia, without being an Australian PR, they are paying a local student's fee. If they want to go to in United States or Canada, they are paying a local local student's fee for United States and 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 you know Canada. So this is how strong you know they how powerful is this whole entire golden visa is. I'm talking about this opportunity, but not just in Portugal, not in Europe, but across across the world. For your children's yeah that that is really great because a lot of people right now is like uh as you know the education fees is actually um has been increasing over years and especially those families with few kids that would like to pursue the 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 study to um, uni and especially go to europe um the the course fees is actually very expensive and this round, if you were to say that by uh, getting this uh, Portugal Golden Visa, not only applied to Europe country, but it applied to Asia, US, Canada, and Australia as well. Uh, that is amazing. Yeah, well, I agree with you, Mandy. You know, just look at the world today. You know, so much developments, so much of surprises. And, you know, that increased the needs of having a second residency. And when it comes to second residency, it has to be a program that doesn't cost payday to maintain. Yeah, but it's also talking about, you know, going into a country that is stable, yeah, and welcoming. And I think Portugal, you know, have all the factors, you know, that is that call, you know, that ticks your boxes. Yeah. So in summary, I would say Portugal provides an excellent quality of life, either if you are you're looking from the business perspective or you're looking at, you know, going moving there as a migrant. Yeah. The tax regime, the countries, the government has introduced a lot of incentive, including attractive tax regimes for individual. Yeah, it doesn't burden you, you know, if you are, you know, if you are having the incomes across the world, yeah, the global tax income, you know, they have this non habitual resident tax incentive that's available, yeah, for you as a migrant. The countries welcome foreign investor. All the properties are freehold and you do all the properties registered under your name you have you do have the control over when you want to sell when you wanted to you know uh, uh to buy and there's no inheritance tax if you were to pass the property from yourself to your next generation there's no tax on that yeah free movement of sengen from the golden visa alone you know, is really, really attractive. Yeah. So, so that kind of, I think, kind of summarize, you know, the, the session for today. Yeah, Mandy? Yep. 
So for those that who is really interested to know more about this golden visa, you can um, contact uh, Desmond directly. The email address and the contact number is here as well. So do add fast while uh, the option is still very flexible and um, the entry level is still considered relatively low. I believe that eventually when the, uh, the demand is um, getting very hot and I'm sure the governments will actually uh, revise the uh, criteria as well. Uh, would you agree that I say that, Desmond? Oh, yes. You know, I've seen like, for example, you know, other than Portugal Golden Visa, uh, we have been handling the, 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 the Australia uh, investment programs for the longest time and we have seen the investment going from 500,000, 750,000 Aussie dollar, 1.5 million Aussie dollar, 2.5 million Aussie dollar and I, I'm sure and very confident that you know this is what you're going to be seeing you know uh, happenings on the Portugal Golden Visa over the years as well. Yeah. Yep. Well, what an insightful information shared by Desmond. And I believe that after hearing what uh, Desmond said, a lot, of, a lot of us or a lot of audience are uh, really keen to uh, look into the detail of this uh, Portugal Golden Visa. Don't you all agree? I mean, if you all agree, perhaps a press uh, two and so that uh, you are actually excited about this uh, program. So should you have more questions which uh, you we miss, okay, uh, feel free to actually leave it in the comment box or uh, you can directly contact Desmond uh, for more information, especially on the applications uh, uh, and the process of the Portugal Golden Visa. Well, I believe that having a contingency plan nowadays or obtaining a second residency uh, is actually very popular decisions amongst uh, not only to the Asians, but to the uh, uh, European uh, people as well. And um, for this Portugal Golden Visa, those is began in 2012, not too long, okay, uh, but still you have more than 10 years uh, uh, experience and it has actually proven to be one of the best residency by investment program in the world. So hence, don't miss these golden opportunities and start considering now. And well, if you miss any of our previous webinar, and uh, you can see that I actually shared uh, the two link uh, in the comment box, you can click on it and watch the replay. Do give us lots of supports and likes by sharing our program to your friends and in the events that you know any one of you, okay, whether your friends, your relative, or even your parents that are interested in this program, talk to us immediately, okay? And of course, don't forget to join us this Saturday at 9 p.m. P 9.30 p.m. GMT plus 8 at Facebook and YouTube. We will have another interesting session with Desmond to talk about an insight of popular residency program between Australia and Portugal. Therefore, mark your calendar and don't miss it. All right? So before we end this session, Desmond, you have any uh, last uh comments or, or feedbacks or, or advice to all the audience here? Yeah, uh, well, uh, you know, uh, my, I think, you know, over the years from the experience, my best advice to everyone out there is, you know, when it comes to when is the best timing, you know, to, 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 to initiate or to apply for the application or the visa, the answer has always been yesterday. And <laughs> why is it so? Because, you know, as you see, the requirements becoming more stringent and difficult. Talking about this golden visa, before 1st of January, if you were to invest into the private managed fund, it was 350000 But look at those who is doing it now, it is 500000 So again, I think this overall, you know, this program is a fantastic program that I make an effort to make sure that people don't uh, overlook these programs. And I think our intent and the, and the objective is to share these programs as many people out there. Yeah, and, and Mandy, you agree with me, you know, can't agree with me more. And we just want to, as many people out there to learn about these programs, whether it's for family member or, you know, for the people around you, yeah, your, your friends, your relative, do share with them. Yeah, for those who also wish to contact us, you know, over the WhatsApp or ring us up other than sending us an email, 
yeah, our contact number is 012-6216-445. I repeat, 012-6216-445. You could also WhatsApp us alternatively. You know, you could also contact Mandy or IQI and, you know, reach out to us. Yeah, and I hope everyone enjoyed this session. Thank you, Desmond. So, um, one last question. So should um, any of our audience, okay, uh, or any of our clients or, or our um, um, agents uh, interested in this program, by watching uh, this whole month series that we are running for Portugal, um, starting from last week until end of this month, so in the event anyone interested, will there be any special... Um, um, promotions uh, from your sites. I'm actually <laughs> asking on behalf of uh, some of my agents here. <laughs> well, this is a, I think this is a very interesting question. You know, of course, Mandy, we have been working together and uh, for so many years, clients who is looking at, uh, or any agents or any partners who is looking at uh, these programs for themselves, we are going to be able to work on something that is, uh, you know, that is going to be very attractive for them. Yeah. Okay, perhaps uh, 15 minutes free consultancy sessions with that one. <laughs> sure. You know, I'm happy to even, you know, give more times because, you know, I'm so, you know, it's, it's, it, being in this industry is really interesting. You know, you hear about people's story, you hear about, you know, the needs of them. And, you know, th though when we are talking about 15 minutes, but ended up, you know, it becomes one hour and this is happening all the time. <laughs> yeah, for those uh, who's interested to have our Slack, okay, uh, today, which uh, Desmond uh, actually presented, okay, please leave your uh, PMers, okay, leave your contact number or email address, we will send you a copy. And this only applied to first 10 uh, uh, audience who responded uh, to our comment, okay, then uh, you will get this uh, presentation uh, slide for free, all right? So... Once again, thank you very much, Desmond, for your awesome sharing. And I shall see you this Saturday again. Have a pleasant day. And yes, yeah. I'm Mandy Chan signing off. Bye, -bye everyone. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.
We will stand up and rise together. We will march into win.